Guys, if you're still flipping and wholesaling houses, you are absolutely dead wrong. In this video, I'm gonna show you, not just me, but Dan Habercoss, the specialist of spec home building, is gonna show you how long does it take to build a spec home. All right, so first we're gonna be talking about rural markets and how long it could take there and then other markets like California. And by the end of this video, you're gonna have a good understanding of how long it actually takes to build a spec home. All right, Dan, let's hear it. How long does it take to build a spec home? I know it's different in every market as you were talking about before we hit the record button, but mm -hmm. go ahead, let's jump into it. Yeah, Brent, unfortunately the answer is it depends as it so often is, but I'll kind of talk through different scenarios and, and where it tends to take longer versus shorter. So this can vary dramatically. You know, if you go to California, I was talking to a guy, I forget the market, but it's out by where they hold Coachella. He was doing some builds out there and it was going to take him almost a year just to get a permit. The, the whole permit. process for us. Yeah. Crazy. The whole process here in the markets I'm in in Colorado from getting the permit to building the house takes less than that. So for example, I bought a lot in the last November, it might've been early December. I forget exactly when I closed, we got it permitted and broke ground. I want to say January 12th or 13th. It's currently in the rough infrastructure phase. And I intend to have that closed and sold, you know, early to mid June. So that's a total of a six to seven month process. You know, during the pandemic, things were slowed down. Sometimes it might take more in the, let's say six to nine month process from closing on the land to having the house built. But that's the max. And again, when, when the world's more normal before the pandemic, we'd have these things built in four months and permitted the month we closed on the land. So it's a really quick process here. And again, to contrast, I have a friend up in Denver building. It's a million dollar plus or might even be a $2 million home. That's taking him like 18 months. Yeah. So maybe you notice there, the expensive builds in expensive markets tend to have a lot of red tape. It takes a lot longer, but on you know a million, a $2 million house, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe half a million dollars. Whereas the builds we're doing in more second or third level markets, you know, very much rural, we'll say, and a wow. lot fewer or a lot less rules and red tape. We get it done a lot faster, but we also don't make, you know, 300 grand. This is a 260, 270 basis on a 380 or 390 sales price. So the, the time frame is going to vary depending on your municipality and what you're building. If you want to build a simple spec like we are in you know Florida or Colorado in some of the more rural markets, it can be quick. You can pump these things out. If you want to go build a, a mansion up in, in Denver, that's going to take a lot of time. So you need to just know what you're going to build talk to the municipality, talk to people already doing it in your market. So you have clear expectations. You know, if you are expecting to get a payday or expecting, you know, telling your private money lenders, you're only going to have the money tied up for eight months, but you're trying to build in the middle of Denver, you're going to be in trouble. So it's a matter of doing the due diligence ahead of time, knowing what it's going to take, allocating an extra buffer, and then setting expectations appropriately. Yeah. Are there places like you can check with like regional building or maybe even, you know, other builders in the area or mm -hmm. people that are actually doing it? Like, mm -hmm. how would you recommend like, hey, you just dropped me in a market in Colorado or Florida. How would I find out like just a guesstimate? Because my private lender wants to know. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head there. I would call the building department and talk through what materials they need. What's the review process? How often do they review? What fees are involved? so on and so forth. And then also call local GCs and, and other builders who are actually doing it and get a feel for what's happening in practice. So get both of those perspectives so you have a clear time frame on what materials you need, whether it's you know designs, engineering, et cetera. And the cost, again, don't forget the cost of those materials plus getting the permit, tap fees, et cetera, and then the time frame. And again, talking to the municipality that, governs it, right? And then talking to people actually going through the process and you're going to get a very clear picture on what sort of time frame you should expect to get your permit and then ultimately get the house built. One of the best ways that I found to get information is like actually just going there with a humble attitude. Like, yes. hey, I'm just getting started. I don't know. I was hoping you could help me out. People are yes. so willing to help you with a humble attitude rather than like the absolutely 
I know like everything. And then most of the time people want to help you. And before we get into any more of this, if this is an episode that's like ringing your bell, definitely hit that like button. Also smash that subscribe button. And maybe you even know someone that you can share this video with. Please go ahead and do that. Yeah. Uh, but to your point, Brent, that is absolutely essential and just goes to basic communication skills, being humble, asking questions, acknowledging that you don't know it all and that they might or do and that they do it every day goes a long way in getting information, especially I find when talking to anyone at the local government, obviously government employees don't have the best reputation, but it's kind of an endless negative feedback loop where I think people treat them poorly. So my experience has been when I'm when I'm patient or friendly, when communicating with them, I generally get a very good response. And you never know, you might end up finding someone who knows beginning to end everything you want to know. I've had that happen and they might be perfectly willing to help you. So yeah, just talking to people and being humble and friendly goes a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So what would you say, like, for instance, uh, it took us a little while, like, I think from the time we first talked about it to the time we sold Mustang Drive, what, 10 months? Is yeah. that how long it took? But we also had several delays. We had quite a few. Yeah. Uh, took longer. What are some of the ways to anticipate what could delay you or maybe even speed the project up? That's a good, good question. And so I would start at square one right? If you know ahead of time, hey, I'm going to be buying this lot and I'm going to be doing this build, start talking to everyone ahead of time. Call your engineer, your surveyor, your architect, whoever is involved and get an idea of what their time frame is. You need to know, okay, when is my contractor going to be ready to take this through regional building department and get the permit? Make sure you, okay, hey, if it's going to be six weeks to get my plans, well, I better have started this seven or eight weeks back with my architect before that meeting where my, my contractor intends to get the permit. And I also should have had the survey lined up and so on and so forth. So just planning ahead, getting expectations as to how long each and, and every vendor is going to take and, and planning accordingly. You know, we had a holdup at Mustang with the municipality getting the water tap in. So what do you know? On Lakeview, the one we're doing right now, I reached out to Jim at the water department and got an idea of, hey, when do we need to pay this to make sure it's done well ahead of time, right? So thinking through each step of the process and communicating with everyone involved and then planning and delegating accordingly is really the key there to minimizing things that, that slow you up. So building those checklists and yep. as you do one, you learn from those you know, setbacks or mistakes and then adding that to the checklist and reaching out in advance and, and scheduling things in advance. It sounds like you are always communicating yes. with you know, the wheels yes. that, that move you forward. So communication is huge. I'm hearing that. Like, that's what I'm hearing the whole entire time. A lot of communication is happening behind the scenes. Are you the guy out there swinging the hammer too on the roof? No, no <laughs> absolutely not. So guys, that's the point of your GC. I don't know who our framers are or where the appliances are coming from. I don't want to know any of that. I want this to be a fairly passive or almost a completely passive system that runs without me. So that's why again, see our video uh, where we talk about tips on building spec homes and talk about selecting your general contractor. But that's why I do my due diligence and screening my contractor. So I have confidence in his ability to select all the subs that actually do swing the hammer. Yeah. If you haven't seen those videos, uh, tips on building a spec home, check it out. Dan is just giving so much valuable information that he spent years cultivating and creating and now building. And I've just got the honor to do couple builds with him as well. Uh, guys, if you're interested in finding out more about building, building yourself financial freedom, building on the land, or even finding the land at crazy discounts to build on, and then I'm going to introduce you to a podcast that Dan and I did together with the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. You can hear more about that. But head on over to ibuildfreedom.com, schedule a call, see what your goals are. We can see if we align each other and we'd be honored to help you build financial freedom through building on your land and making much larger profits. Get away from that wholesaling game and the flipping house and stuff. That stuff is gone and out of the picture. Jump on board. You're absolutely missing out on massive, massive profits. And Dan even said it, passive passive time. And also check out that podcast that uh, Dan talks about doing 70 land transactions in the last 18 months.